I'm Jess. Welcome to the Rochester Press Box from McGregor's. The Rochester Press Box is brought to you by McGregor's Grill and Tap Room. Now with six locations, including the newest at Easton Alexander. Featuring in-house catering for parties, McGregor's, a beer lover's paradise. Hello everyone and welcome to the Rochester Press Box here from McGregor's downtown. Bill Pucker with you with John DiTulio from WHTK. Billy. Johnny. Toby Matika from 13 Wham News. Nice to have you. And Bob Sims, the survivor of the day when the LPGA media room had beer taps and we had a pool on who was going to win. <laughs> Those were the days. Yeah, Mr. Sims with two M's is also the golf coach at St. John Fisher was a longtime baseball coach. Yeah, thanks for joining us, buddy. Well, we're on the subject of the LPGA. You know, the times are changing. The times have changed. The golfers have changed. The course is now changing. Where do we stand with the LPGA, do you think, these days? Well, the LPGA is going through, I think, a phase that we're getting more international players. Um, and they're dominating. Uh, the players are much better today than they were even five, six years ago. It used to be that you could count in one hand or two hands how many players could win in a given week. Now anyone can win. So I think, I think as far as golf is concerned, it's going to have to be an international thing with both the men and the women. So golf is a worldwide uh, sport today. But it is interesting to watch because of the relatability factor. There is that barrier from time to time between fans and golfers. And give these golfers, the foreign golfers credit, they're learning English. Oh. They really make an effort to learn English. Inby Park, who won, spoke really good English and was a very good soundbite. So, Give them credit, but there is still that relatability that might True. be missing between fans and golf. Uh, you know, as a kid, I watch golf because of Jack Nicklaus. I think you always need somebody who transcends the sport. Nicklaus got me in, and I'll be honest, I didn't watch unless Nicklaus played. Uh, Nancy Lopez, when she burst onto the scene as a youngster, I started watching the LPGA. So if you take Tiger Woods off the PGA Tour, if he just walked away, their ratings would be in the tank. And they've got Rory McIlroy and Adam Scott. You need a player, I don't care who it is, if it's a Korean, it'd be great if it was an American, who transcends the sport. That's the only way golf will be on the map. I'll tell you what, it looked like Yanni Sen was about to do that. She had won more majors yeah. in a shorter period of time than any golfer, man or woman, ever. And she has since kind of just fallen off. The last couple of years, she's done almost nothing since winning the LPGA Championship two years ago. It looked like they were gonna have that, Right now, they just don't. It's, it's tough to be number one. <laughs> it is yeah. tough to be number one. I mean, look at Rory, okay? Yeah. Yeah. He fell off the map for a little bit, played yeah. bad. I mean, how many players are actually have the desire and the determination like Jack Nicklaus, Tiger Woods, Arnold Palmer? And these are special people. Tom Watson, these are special. You can't take it. Well, there was a time where Annika Sorenstam draw you, you know, drew you in a little bit. The Michelle Wee phenomenon for about a, I don't know, half a year, <laughs> but until they get someone, uh, yeah, Lorena Ochoa was close, she was winning a lot of the uh, tournaments, but we need we need an American who's going to transcend the sport. You like know, Tiger why are we as bothered with it? The whole South Korean thing gets debated with the LPGA a lot, and, and yet the, the globalization of all our sports, the high number of Dominicans in baseball now, the European influence in both hockey and basketball, but we don't seem to mind that so much. Well, think about it along the lines of tennis right now, too. I can't name you the number one American men's tennis player right now. I just, I, I can't. And I'm a former tennis player myself. Serena Williams obviously dominating on the yep. women's side. But at the same time, y you just, globalization is wonderful, but, but we still would like to see the Americans in the mix. And right now in tennis, they've had a problem with that. And in LPGA, I feel like they're having a bit of a problem with that. Stacey Lewis has a shot. And mm -hmm. She's sure. got to get more consistent. Even Serena, bring up Serena, it's a good example. But after her, where? Right. And, we knew where? About, and we knew about the Williams girls growing up. We knew about Tiger from the time he was three. He was going to be, who is the next phenom? Who is the next transcendent sport uh, player on the LPGA Yeah, tournament? and if it's not an American, we have to do, get behind the That's whole thing. It's yep. the good of the sport, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, when we return, we're going to take a look at the greatest coaches of all Kaylee, and you're watching the Rochester Press Box from McGregor's. 
Welcome back to the Rochester Press Box here from McGregor's Downtown. Bill with John, Toby, and Bob. Greatest coaches of all time. We get into this discussion because on June 11th, Vince Lombardi would have turned 100 years old. Now, since you're the only guy in a <laughs> far removed from the whole Lombardi discussion, yeah. Toby, greatest coaches of all time, who do you like? You'd probably think I'd say Phil Jackson, right? I think that's what happened when I walked in here. I was like, ah, oh, young kid's going to say Phil. Phil's great. Don't get me wrong. I mean, when you don't have enough fingers to use all of your rings, I mean, <laughs> that's pretty good. But I was going to say Red Auerbeck. And there's something to me about doing it all in the same place for such a consistent period of time with such a similar group of guys. He just kept their attention and kept their respect for so long and had so much success. There's something about him that just resonates with me, I think, from what I've watched. I know he was kind of before my time. I wasn't watching basketball when I was one, but he uh, he was a really good coach. You have to be a Lombardi guy, right? Well, absolutely. I have yet to work at a place where there's not a Lombardi quote. And when your name's on the trophy that you win, I mean, I've yet to yeah. see a Red Arbaugh trophy or a, a Scotty Bowman trophy. I mean, Vince Lombardi, to me, I think you start with Lombardi. Nine, five championships in nine years, and he goes to the Redskins, and Bob, you probably know this better than any, floundering franchise, mm -hmm. and he gets them over 500, and then he gets cancer and dies. So, mm -hmm. so the one year he's in Washington, he turned that franchise into a, uh, he put the building blocks in place for the Redskins. He defined coaching football, I think, for an entire generation. Absolutely. There's no, every coach today will look at Lombardi. And I think what helps Lombardi is NFL films. Yeah. I think it helps a lot. It, it keeps his name and memory alive. And just his coaching style. That and so many books. I mean, if yeah. you know Lombardi, there's plenty of places to get it. Bob, who do you like? The Pyramid of Success. John Wooden. I mean, I've read, I've been a coach for 20 some odd years, I've read all of Wooden's books, and there's a quote everywhere of the Pyramid of Success. Uh, Hurry, don't rush, you know, <laughs> things like that. That's a great one. He, uh, the epitome of coaching, the way he handled his players, he always gave a player a second chance, always. Uh, never a third, but he always gave a player a second chance. He won, he was respected. I mean, John Wooden is at the top of my my list. The word respect, I, a guy who was revered among the coaching ranks especially, I think the public generally like, right, yeah, he had so many great players, he didn't have to be a good coach, but coaches love the guy, don't they? Coaches love him. They all, I mean, a lot of coaches have patterned everything they do off of it. One time, um, uh, UCLA had a study, and one of the professors wanted to, had to meet successful people, first person he went to, John Wooden. I'm, uh, I'm with you. I like our back. Yeah. I thought well, when you look at Red Auerbach, you have to factor in the Homer thing. call. Yes. Isn't that a Homer call? <laughs> I'm a Homer call, but but I understand. I've got a there's a dark side to this thing too. Is uh, he was a product also of the '60s. He was yeah. dealing with a lot of stuff that came in with the '60s. He brought in you know Bill Russell. He made Bill Russell yeah. the first African American coach, uh, and, and it was a time where he was you know juggling a whole lot of things in a city that was still suffering under the weight of the fact that Pumsy Green was their first black baseball player, and he didn't arrive until 1962. Yeah, I mean, it took him, it was 16 years after Jackie Robinson. Right. So our back called, had all that to deal with. What do we make of Phil Jackson then? Well, you brought him up. Great, great, but, you know, he picks and chooses his spots, more power to him. But, you know, when you can, when you've won six championships with Michael Jordan and five with Kobe Bryant, a few of them with Kobe and Shaq, it, it looks better, and I know all great coaches need great players to generally be successful. I don't know, it loses a little of its luster to me in that translation. There had hurt himself when he came out public and said, I need great players. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm not I willing to coaches. take on this project. Well, you look at Lombardi, I mean, that team won, what, won one game right. the year before he got there. Yeah. The but Celtics I, were no good before our Exactly. Back. I think if you look, if you go the last 25 years, if you broke it up, I think Phil Jackson's probably near the top. I yeah, wanna, not at yeah, the top. I do want to see a great coach build something, too, rather than just come in and kind of take the pieces that didn't work and make them work. I want to see him build something from the ground up. How about Bill Belichick? He's made it work. He has. Every been a year. long time Every since he's year. won, though. Been a long time. He, the longest Boston major sports <laughs> franchise yeah. since their last championship was the tomorrow. Patriots. I said, Me yeah, and you both. <laughs> I put him on my Mount Rushmore of NFL coaches. Yeah. I put him along with Bill Walsh, Vince Lombardi, and then Chuck Noll. That's my four. And, right. I'm a, and I'm a Browns fan. And he didn't do so well <laughs> with the Browns. So. Yeah. You always hear from those people. Like it or not, when we return. Press box from McGregor's. 
Welcome back. This is the Rochester Press Box from McGregor's downtown. Like it or not, John, let's go first. Uh, the Dodgers and the Diamondbacks played a baseball game. Ian Kennedy yeah. hit somebody. Retaliation. Path. Law of the jungle. Like it or not in baseball? Uh, I like it. I mean, when we were talking earlier, if you're going to throw in, if you, if you can't throw inside, then don't throw inside. I think hitting you still Puig in the nose, I got an issue with. We were talking about hitting him in the back. You want to, you want to, it's just, that's old school, the unwritten rule. You're going to introduce him to the game. All right, welcome to the big leagues. Plunk him in the back. I got no issue with it. There is something to be said that guys making millions of dollars are brawling out there. I know that may be off the charts a little bit. <laughs> These guys are making millions of dollars, yeah. yet they're fighting like little kids out there. And to me, it's somewhat inspiring. Clayton uh, Kershaw was in the middle Kershaw's of Kershaw's in the yeah. middle. You got Don Mattingly, Kirk Gibson. We're throwing haymakers. <laughs> I loved it. Now, I, I've always been in favor of throwing at players, but I don't, I'm not in favor of throwing above the shoulder. Yeah. That's Bob, baseball talk coach, uh, well, did you ever have to deal with this at the collegiate level? Well, not, 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 not anything like that. However, pitcher has to throw inside in order to be effective. Um, but the problem is, I think it starts in college with the use of the metal bats. Pitcher throws inside. They hit, get a little, they hit the ball off the handle, they get a base hit because the metal bats are so hard. So thus, in college, they never learn how to pitch inside. And many times, you can outclass your competition by just throwing the ball hard. Um, when they get to the pros, they have to learn how to pitch. And they haven't learned how to pitch inside. You look at back in the old days with Don Drysdale. This would, they did this routinely. Yeah. Bob Gibson. You would never, a pitcher, the batters today just dig in against these pitchers. They have no fear. you got to have fear and a, and, and a little respect. And then maybe uh, learn how to handle it. They have to learn how to get out of the way. But there are limits, aren't there? Yeah, there have to be. I mean, the big 95 mile an hour hard ball traveling at someone's face is dangerous. I don't care if they're wearing a helmet. It's a weapon. Yeah, exactly. Hit them in the butt. That's hit him in the ribs. Yes. Hit him in yes. the ribs. Take him, hit him, in the hit him in, in somewhere in the middle of their body. Throw behind him by 10 feet for all I care. Make him shake a little bit, but don't go after someone's livelihood. Like it or not, look, Stanley Cup playoffs is a great matchup. The first original six yeah. in 79, Boston, Chicago. Toby, is anybody paying attention? Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, yeah, I, I think so, especially in this area. We're a hockey area, so people do still watch hockey here. I know the Buffalo Sabres fans watch hockey whether their team's in it or not. Um, I hope people are paying attention. It's a great sport. It doesn't translate as well to TV as it does live. But I mean, you looked at not just these final two teams, you looked at the final four. I mean, there is hockey history running through the Stanley Cup playoffs yeah. right now. And you got the Blackhawks and the Bruins, another Boston team and another championship. I mean, do you think they need that every sport. year? Do you think they need that every year, the original teams playing? I think that it doesn't hurt. I don't think it hurts yeah. them because the, the markets that do the best are the ones that have these original teams. They love it. They watch it. And they will get a little more national attention than, say, if yeah. it's Vancouver versus... And the Buffalo. conference finals drew well. They did they very yeah. well. But it's better if Sidney Crosby's entered the face of the league. But there's Patrick Kane, the young star, and what happened with the Boston bombings. I think you'll see the country rally behind the Bruins. No, I hope so because that, that, should, be a, that should be a great series. Yeah. Like it or not, Bob, Gavin Hall's future in, the, in golf playing the U.S. Open this week? Love it. It'll be a great experience for him. He'll learn how to uh, move the ball, shape the ball. He'll finally see a real hard golf course. I mean, he hasn't seen it. He's been a junior playing at AJGA events. They don't see hard golf courses yeah. set up like that. There's only one, the U.S. Open. How early is too early to predict a great future for a kid as a pro? I mean, what is he, 19? 18. He's 18. 18. 18. It's 18. It's, it's hard to tell. He's got all the tools. He's got the, but more importantly, he's got the mindset. Yep. One of the nicest kids you'll ever yep. meet. Nice. Gavin is just a nice kid. By the way, he said he shot roughly a even par in his Sunday practice round when he hit the hole in one. That won't just get him through the cut. <laughs> That'll get him in the top 20 on a course like this. All right. Well, we certainly wish him well. It makes, it makes the U.S. Open all that more yep. interesting. Uh, unfinished business when we return. the Rochester Press Box from McGregor's. Back with the Rochester Press Box here from McGregor's downtown. Unfinished business. John. Hey, Tim Tebow's back in the NFL. <laughs> when he was cut by the Jets or released back in April, there was a few teams I wrote down that could be a possible good fit. I thought the Giants. I thought the Packers. But at the top of that list, New England. Go to a place where they've got a legendary head coach and a, more importantly, a franchise quarterback. So, A, C, there will be no quarterback controversy. 
And if anybody can handle the press, who better than Bill Belichick? His press conference on Tuesday should be taped and sent to the Jets on how to handle the press, on how bad Rex Ryan and the Jets and Mike Tannenbaum completely fumbled the entire Tebow mania a year ago at SUNY Cortland. I don't know what kind of impact Tebow can make on a team that has been to five Super Bowls over the last 11 years and has won the AFC East every year but twice since 2001. But I think it's good for the NFL that Tebow is back in the league. And I think it's even better he's in a place where he can almost hide out, and that's New England. <laughs> well, if, if he can hide out, I mean, it's, it's tough to argue with those points. If he can hide out, that's perfect. It's a perfect hiding spot for and him. And there weren't many. Yeah, exactly. Bob, what do you got? The LPGA. I've been a volunteer at the LPGA since 1984. I've seen many, many things, many great things. Patty Sheehan winning when she was broke, when her manager stole her money. I've seen the likes of Kathy Whitworth, all these great players. And you want to know something? The players today are better. They're all better. And I believe everyone will grow to love all of these players. They're all different. They have great personalities. When Siri Park started the, uh, the, the invasion, so, so to speak, from Korea, it's nothing but made the golf a better place. Well it's, been a, it's been a good run, hasn't it? Oh, it's been a great run. Is Locust Hill like, they say they're going to miss this thing if and when, and it seems like it's going to go to Monroe. Is that, a, is that I'll okay tell you, with there's, you? There's a lot of good tracks here in Rochester. You have Monroe, you have CCR, you have Oak Hill, okay? You have Midvale, you have Cobblestone. There are many good places. Maybe, maybe if they switched year to year at a different golf course, uh, maybe that would be the answer. Keep cool. it here. Keep it in Rochester. We'll keep it in Rochester. Yep. That's important. You're on board with that. That's good. Yes. Toby? We talked about Gavin Hall a little bit playing in his first U.S. Open. While he's doing that, another great Rochester athlete's getting a pretty cool opportunity. Thomas Bryant, Bishop Kearney basketball player, helped lead BK to a New York State AA state title this year. Is playing for the Team USA under-16 team in the American <laughs> Championships. North America, South America. Listen to what he did. They beat Mexico 130 to 31 in his first game. He had 10 points, nine boards, five blocks, a couple of steals, and assists. Turned it over just once. Hit every shot he took from the field. By the way, was second on the team in minutes. The kid has a very bright future. Right now, ESPN has him as number two in the class of 2015. I feel like we're watching a little bit of Generation Next with Gavin, Thomas Bryant, guys in college, maybe like Deron Jones at Notre Dame. It's going to be interesting to see how this yeah. new young Rochester athletic landscape and, continues to And yet I feel disappointed because I, I make a point of seeing Bishop Carney play basketball yeah. this last year. I never saw this kid dominate a game. If he's that good on a national scale, I just don't get it. Wasn't his team yet. You had Antoine Anderson and Chinoso Obaco yeah. as the seniors. They didn't need him to dominate yet. Toward the end of the season, he started doing that in a showcase game against a national power out of Ohio. He had 26 yeah. points and 11 rebounds. Next year might be a pretty good opportunity. He's still got two years, just 15 years old. Yeah, I was going to ask you, is next year the year? I mean, is, is that it's the year? Start that being the year. It's going to start to be the year. It is pretty exciting. Well, there was a, a newscaster at a local radio station lost his job this past week for some comments he made about the LPGA. It was, uh, it was a throwaway line. It was something that he really didn't have to use, and it's one we've heard variations of before. Uh, it might have been funny the first time you heard it about how South Korean women get their names. But, but it's old and it really wasn't funny and it's regrettable that he used it. The thing about that that gets me is, however, if Brother <coughs> Reeves, for instance, had used that same line on his morning show here in Rochester, no problem. If John DeTulio, who does sports with Brother Weeze, is sitting in with him, he uses that line and John laughs. No problem. John takes that same line and uses that on his show in the afternoon and he's got big trouble. To add insult to injury, the column was picked up by a national blog in USA Today and it became a national issue. And it wasn't very complimentary. But what I was most interested in is afterwards, and last time I checked, there were 29 responses to the column about the column, about the blog. And easily more than half of those were far more insulting than the original column was. You know, the computer age has, has created some curious dichotomies for us here. You know, the boundaries between what you can and can't do and how we receive and disseminate news are oftentimes blurry, and sometimes they're, they're absolutely indistinguishable. And unfortunately, sometimes someone has to pay the price. Guys, thanks very much for being Enjoy on the show. Enjoy it. John DiTulio, Toby Patika, Bob Sims. Come back again, will you? Thanks.
Thanks for joining us. We tape every Wednesday at 12.30 here from McGregor's downtown. You can come in, sit in on the taping with us. Uh, the program airs every Sunday morning on Rochester CW at 11 o'clock. Again, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week.